Good evening. Welcome to the City of Topeka Planning Commission meeting. We are a commission appointed by the Mayor and City Council to plan for the orderly growth and development of the community, to hold public hearings, and to make recommendations to the City Council on planning items. Please note that the City Council rules state that the public hearings for planning cases shall be conducted solely by the Planning Commission. No additional public hearings will be conducted by the City Council. Tonight's cases are tentatively scheduled to be heard by the City Council next month. Agendas may be found at Topeka.org. For cases that require public hearings, the procedure will be as follows. First, the Planning Department staff will summarize the case. Next, we will hear from the applicant or their representative. Then we will receive public testimony. Public comments should be addressed solely to the Chair and are limited to four minutes. Chris, please take roll. Mr. Armstrong? Here. Mr. Freed? Here. Mr. Dean? Here. Ms. Jordan is absent. Mr. Kennard? Here. Ms. Lawson is absent. Ms. Messina is absent. Ms. Ringler? Here. And Mr. Warner? Here. We have six for a quorum. Thank you, Chris. First item on the agenda is the approval of minutes from our July 15 uh, meeting. Are there any questions, edits, comments? It's a very short meeting, very short minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion or comments? Chris? Mr. Armstrong? Aye. Mr. Freed? Aye. Mr. Dean? Aye. Mr. Kenor? Aye. Ms. Ringler? Aye. Mr. Warner? Aye. Motion passes 6 0. Thank you. Next, uh, we need to hear any declarations of conflict of interest or ex parte communications by members of the commission or staff. Madam Chair, I will be okay. sitting out for item D2. Okay. All right. Anyone else? All right. Thank you. So we're going to proceed with the public hearings portion of tonight's agenda. First on the agenda is CPA 1901 by the City of Topeka, the Central Park Neighborhood Plan. Um, commissioners, um, Bryce and Risley will uh, give you an update on the implementation section. Um, gave you some background last month and he'll have a short presentation for you as we wrap this up. Good evening, Commissioners. Um, so again, we're following up from last month's meeting. This is really going to cover the implementation section, what projects we had or will have in the Central Park neighborhood. So a little bit of background in the process. In 2018, the Central Park NIA applied for and was awarded stages of resource targeting grant, which provides $1.7 million for infrastructure and $330,000 for housing rehabilitation and other housing projects in the neighborhood. We had five meetings with the uh, NIA steering committee, and that covered a range of topics as well that would be relevant to the plan. Um, on August 14th, we met with the neighborhood. They liked the content in the plan and approved it. And as previously stated, we'll be moving forward next month. So what is SORT? SORT, again, it's the stages of resource targeting. It's a three-year process. The first year is the planning stage. Uh, we're wrapping that up right now. We've updated the neighborhood plan. Um, we assessed the conditions in the neighborhood, and we've identified 29 projects. Uh, mainly infrastructure projects to take place. Years two and three, 2020 and 2021, um, those will begin implementation. So the planning area itself, Central Park is that gray box. Uh, the dark green is downtown Topeka, just to kind of give an idea of where we're talking about. This area is roughly 210 acres. To the north, we have Southwest Huntoon and Southwest, Southwest 13th Street. To the east, we have Southwest Topeka Boulevard. To the south, Southwest 17th Street. And to the west, Southwest Washburn Avenue. So that is the area we're talking about. So some of the highlights of the plan, um, there's gonna be a continued push for home ownership and investment in single family housing. 
We increased the mixed use zoning in the southwest corner to kind of add or allow for a variety of development in that area. We're going to have reinvestment in the target areas that were established in 2008, building upon some of the successes we saw. Again, we have 29 projects. Um, one of the vacant parcels, there will be a partnership with Cornerstone to develop a duplex, and they're a good landlord in that area, so that will contribute to the investment in the neighborhood. So we have the kind of neighborhood map here just to walk through everything. The base layer you see is the composite score for the neighborhood. The lighter the, re the, lighter the block, the better the conditions. So you can kind of see that areas in the south were not great. Um, that dark blue outline is the primary target area. And then we have the secondary to the east of Central Park. And then farther east, we have the tertiary target area. So the, the red areas you're seeing, those are the anchors of the neighborhood, things that draw people in for a long-term period of time. And the yellow areas that are highlighted are strengths, areas we saw improvement in from the 2008 neighborhood plan to now, something to build upon there. When we met with the Central Park Steering Committee, they voted to address the primary and secondary target area as the main areas of focus. So those will be where we really have those projects taking place. So kind of a color coordination here. The blue area, again, those are the outline of the target areas. The yellow is aligned with sewer projects. The green is aligned with alley projects. The red lines are sidewalk projects. And there are some red X's in there. Those are ADA ramp projects to bring those up into compliance as well. Um, we'll get into a little bit more specifics of the projects in each target area on the following slides. But this is just kind of an overview of this area. So the primary target area, we have 14 projects in this area. They're numbered along with the coordinating line you see there. It follows the same template with the blue outlines of target area, yellow for sewers, green for alleys, red for sidewalks and ADA ramps. This kind of gives a line by line cost of what each project is going to cost. Each one also has a 20% design and contingency built in. So that way we're really trying to ensure all these projects will happen. Um, Projects in the primary target area are just over $950,000, so that's the majority in that primary area. The secondary target area, this is that one immediately to the east of Central Park. Again, we have an, a line-by-line -line itemization of what these projects will cost. Same thing with the 20% design and contingency built in. Um, what we really tried to do, and this goes to all of these projects, especially for sewer and alley, as we looked at what the engineers provided us and, see, and looked for where those projects could overlap so we could ensure that the money would be spread as evenly as possible in these areas and really try and make sure we weren't going to tear up brand new alleys to replace sanitary sewer shortly after. Beyond this, again, we have the housing, uh, the housing money that's set aside. That's $330,000. Uh, 125,000 of that has been set aside for a project with Cornerstone. That's the infill. The remaining 205,000 will be there. People within the primary and secondary target area will be able to apply for rehabilitation money. And we have kind of a backup plan. There are some larger houses in this area to where it might be a little bit difficult for that rehab money to be spent appropriately. So we do kind of have a backup uh, with the sanitary wise if the housing rehab money has some left over. Beyond that, we do have two major neighborhood projects going on. The Southwest Huntoon Street will be getting repaved uh, with a half cent sales tax, and Southwest 17th Street will also be getting repaved. So we have those timelines there as well. So our recommendation is staff recommends the approval of the Central Park Neighborhood Plan as an element of the city's comprehensive plan. <coughs> And again, we have this available online right now. Um, hopefully, we'll be going to council next month. And, and then 2020, in 2021, we will begin implementation. Um, any questions at this time? Question? Yes. Um, yeah, so you talked about overlap a little. And I was trying to combine yellows and greens and see if I could figure them out. But if we're doing a sanitary alley project, does that come with a new concrete alley as well? So for the material, we're 
really trying to put them back to what they were. So if it was previously concrete, everything is planned for that to be replaced as concrete. And maybe three gravel. Yes, yeah, so there's potential that is used as well if that was what it was previously. Okay. Uh, engineers looked at and inventoried those previously. So those estimates are built with those in mind. Thank you. Other questions? Other questions from the commission at this point? Um, we would like to open this up for a public hearing. Um, is there anyone from the public who would like to speak to this neighborhood plan? Would you please come forward and state your name for the record? Uh, my name is Chris Deister. I'm basically a community volunteer. Uh, but I would uh, like to ask what the uh, if there's any in this in this uh, improvement plan here is there any plan to possibly uh, bury electrical lines as you improve that's really I have more of a question than a statement uh, my f my feeling if, if there's a desire here is that as much as possible every improvement we <coughs> make uh, would be a, be accompanied by bearing electrical lines to get everything out of the sky that we can in Topeka so that what we see in the sky are trees and beauty and that's what that's my concern with the, what, how we spend our money here but that, that's all I have for that particular thing okay. is there any response Mission. that I could get now I, I will address that all right thank you um, thank you is there anyone else who would like to speak to the neighborhood plan? Okay. Hearing none, I'll close the public hearing portion. Um, what, we ask him? Yes. Um, <laughs> so the short answer is no. Um, we'll not be addressing electric lines in this project. The longer answer is um, the CIP money for the city that's Part of this project, um, we do not um, control the electric lines through this neighborhood. It's West Star, so we're really just focusing on the the infrastructure money being money that the city is spending on this project. Thank you. Is there any other questions or comments from the commission? plans well written um, and address some of the questions I had um, from the previous presentation. Is there anyone who would like to make a motion? I would motion we recommend approval of the Central Park Plan to the governing body as an element of the city's comprehensive plan. Second. A motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? Okay. Hearing none, Chris. Mr. Warner. Aye. Ms. Ringler. Aye. Mr. Kennard. Aye. Mr. Green. Aye. Mr. Freed. Aye. And Mr. Armstrong. Aye. Motion passes 6-0. All right, thank you. Mr. Armstrong is going to make his way out of the room before we head over to the next agenda item. All right, next on the agenda, uh, Z1906, Martnick and Flynn Wholesale. Um, Ms. Driver? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this is a zoning change. Uh, the applicants requested to rezone their property from M1, which is two-family dwelling district, to C4 commercial district. The property in question is located at 20, 2046 Southwest Van Buren. This property alone comprises 0.15 acres, which is approximately 6,500 square feet. They proposed to reuse the property for vehicle and truck parking in association with their adjacent 
business which surrounds the property on three sides. Formerly, in, until at least 2018, it contained one single family residence. The adjoining properties to the no, no, directly to the north, directly to the east, and directly to the south are all zone C4 commercial district and are uh, have are associated with this applicant's business, which is a siding window and door contractor. Property directly to the west, um, just to the northwest um, across the street, is also zone C4 and contains a garage and commercial building, the use of which is not entirely known. Properties to the southwest are still single family dwellings um, and zoned M1. The applicant um, was required to hold a neighborhood information meeting that was done on Monday, July 29th. There were two near, and in addition to staff and the applicant, there were two nearby property owners attending that meeting. They did not express any concerns directly related to the zoning change itself. Um, one of the adjacent neighbors had some concerns with, the, with some drainage issues in general and not as a result of this owner. The applicant's engineer indicated those would be addressed at the time they submit for a parking lot permit. As we will have to show, there's not a net increase in runoff as a result of any increase in impervious surface. So a parking lot permit is required with this change. Findings and conclusions re reflect the golden factors. Um, staff has determined the proposed zoning will have little or detrimental effect on the character of the neighborhood as it is surrounded by their existing business. <clears throat> is compatible with the zoning to the north, um, east, and south, as well as to the west. The proposed rezoning is in conformance to the conference and plan since it's really intended to accommodate the expansion of their parking and loading areas to the, to, and associated with their business directly adjoining the site. Um, no anticipated detrimental effects. There, there would be no anticipated detrimental effects resulting from the zoning since it's, there are light zoning and land uses to the north, east, and south, and west. Um, just to note, um, under our uh, 18225 outside storage of non-merchandise, a landscape plan will be required, which will be reviewed by city staff at the time they submit for a parking lot permit to address some screening and fencing that would be a requirement. Staff is recommending approval of the zone change, and I'm open for any questions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions from the commission? Okay. Hearing none, I'll open this up for public hearing. Is there anyone who would like to speak to this? Good evening, Commissioners. Angela Sharp with Bartlett and West representing the owners, and they're here as well this evening should you have any questions directly for them. Um, as Annie indicated, this is an infill type development, which is really just where we had one of the things we had in mind when we adopted the land use growth management plan, especially when it comes from one of our <coughs> upstanding long term uh, businesses here in Topeka. And as an Annie indicated, we will be analyzing the drainage that goes along with the parking lot that is put in so that we make sure there's not a detrimental effect to the downstream property owners. So with that, I would stand for any questions. Any questions for the applicant? Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else from the public who would like to speak to this agenda item? Hi, I'm Patrick DeLapp. I an owner within the 200 feet of these changes. I've got some concern with what's going on here. Um, my concern is, yes, one of the individuals, Jenny, which lives to the east, is concerned about water runoff. Currently, when she has a downpour in the house, the water runs across her property and goes <coughs> underneath her front porch. Uh, that indicates to me, you need a water retention pond of some sort. Absolutely. And right now, we're going to even put more concrete on this. Um, 
I want to talk to you what's being passed around right now is another zoning thing which they occurred back in 2006. 2006 on Robbie Street, and you can see it right there in C3. Martin and Flynn bought three houses, tore them down, and applied for a zoning change uh, for it. They had an attorney represent them. They told them that it was going to be very nice. They were going to put asphalt on there. They're going to have concrete curbs, concrete gutters, put trees on it. I was made aware of the zoning change. I read it. I didn't object. Yeah, it looks cool. It's going to look good. Almost 13 years later, they have failed to complete those requirements they had. Take a look at the second page. That's looking across from my property. I put forty to fifty thousand dollars in materials and labor into my house. In my house, because you look at this mess out there, is worth half that amount. If we approve this, gentlemen, I want a contingency that they finish what they started 13 years ago and do my rights right. Because right now, you know, my opinion, this is actionable. They have damaged my property values. Um, when they make a promise, they should live up to it, and they have not. Vinyl siding business is one of the more profitable businesses out there. Typically, an 80% markup from what it costs cost in materials and labor and uh, insurance is typical. That's not unheard of at all. So it's highly profitable. They can afford to change this. Um, after this occurred, I was talking, I don't remember, I was talking to the neighbor or one of the employees. We complained about they haven't done what they wanted. And the joke was made, oh, they put asphalt out there, asphalt millings. Not cool. Not cool at all. Um, if we make the change, again, gentlemen, I want to see a contingency see on there that the 2006 zoning change that was approved, they complete what they started there or lock this thing down. I stand for questions. Are there any questions for the speaker? Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience who would like to speak to this agenda item? Evening. Just in response to uh, to the comments, um, in 2006 they did bring a zoning case for the property to the south in the hopes that they could build a parking lot on that property, and it was not economically feasible once they got the zoning in place to actually build the parking lot. When they do build that parking lot at some time in the future, if they decide to do so, the landscaping that was designed and approved with that parking lot permit will be installed, but they haven't built the parking lot, therefore they haven't put in the landscape either. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. I have a question for staff. Um, so if there's not an action, is there a enforcement, enforceable action, I guess, from the city's standpoint? <coughs> Madam Chair, with regard to the, uh, the other site, not the, the other stuff. site, okay. yeah. Um, yeah, if there is no action, then um, there's nothing to enforce unless any inaction causes another violation, such as maybe not from a zoning standpoint, but from a property maintenance standpoint. Um, so uh, Ms. Sharp is is correct. If if um, as long as they're not using it in a way that is a zoning violation, then there's there's nothing that the the rezoning made them do. Um, it just the, that zoning would allow them, it entitles them a use, should they want to do that in the future. And if they do it, then that's, then there are standards to do it in a certain way. The same is the case with the property in front of us. The zoning change is allowing a certain use, but it also allows other uses. Yes. And there are no, assuming we recommend approval, there are no conditions on that approval. That is correct. It is a what we call straight zoning uh, without conditions. Uh, only the conditions within that zoning district and the allowed uses would be permitted. 
Any questions? Well, we've closed the hearing. Um, are there any other questions or discussion from the commission? So I, I do have one question. Just get, so when they move forward, the landscape plan, that's obviously not part of this motion. That would be when they get to the point of doing a permit. Does that account for everything we've talked about, about the water runoff and any landscaping or requirements they would have as part of that? Yes. Uh, well, the, <coughs> the drainage will have to be addressed when they submit for a parking lot permit and reviewed by our engineering division. Um, landscaping, we need to look at, review that once they submit a plan to us um, that would have to address some screening, um, potentially a, f a five foot landscape setback along the street frontage that is now required for parking lots. Thank you. Any other questions or discussion from the commission? Here. Hearing none, is there anyone who feels comfortable making a motion? Sure. Uh, based on the findings and analysis of the staff report, I move to recommend to the governing body approval of the reclassification of the property from M1 two family dwelling district to C4 commercial district. Second. A motion and a second. Is there anyone <clears throat> who would like to further discuss? I think I would like to comment. I, well, I'm somewhat disturbed about the, the comments our, our speaker made. Uh, if it wasn't feasible for the other parking lot, what makes it feasible for this one now, I mean, I'm still going to end up voting in favor of this because ultimately the question is whether or not this is appropriate to go into C4, which is what's surrounding it at the time. And uh, I, I just, I think that's, that's the bigger issue, even though it is, there were legitimate concerns that were raised about the other project. I still think that this is a rezoning that makes sense. I agree. I think, I think, unfortunately, I mean, unfortunately, sometimes there's a distinction between the two, um, the two sectors of, of this, the city's government. Um, we we're, we're faced with a zoning question here and it's not tied to promises of what may happen to this in the future. There's, there's an indication that they're going to use this as a parking lot. As a business owner, as a property owner, they could change their mind. They could do something else with it that was allowed by the same zoning. And we're, we don't have any um, condition on that right now. <coughs> Is there any other discussion, questions, comments about the motion that's in front of us? Chris, would you take a vote? <coughs> Mr. Armstrong of Sains, Mr. Freed? Aye. Mr. Dean? Aye. Mr. Kennard? Aye. Ms. Ringler? Aye. Mr. Warner? Aye. Motion passes 5-0 with one abstaining. Thank you. Next on our agenda are, is an action item, P-1909. Oh, we're going to wait for Mr. Armstrong. Can I almost pick up? We wouldn't have started without you, I promise. <laughs> All right, we will now proceed to action item P1909, mixed lot subdivision number four. Um, Mr. Nunebaugh. Yes, Madam Chair, Planning Commissioners. The uh, subject variance is related to a proposed uh, minor subdivision plat, mixed lot subdivision number four being processed by staff as a minor plat. The purpose of the plat is to relocate a joint property line approximately 20 feet to the south that reflects actions by property owners through the years, such as placement of landscaping and fences affected by a utility easement. The applicants, specifically, uh, are the applicants are specifically requesting consideration of a variance to the provision of the municipal code requiring that the minimum depth of lots in subdivisions be 110 feet. 
the uh, affected lot uh, will actually have an average depth of approximately 105 feet, five feet less than that required. The, um, the result of this will not uh, adversely uh, affect uh, the setbacks requirements for the uh, subject uh, lot that is affected. And it will even provide actually for um, uh, expansion of the building in the future that still adheres to setbacks. Uh, this is a finding that's among those made uh, as required for the variance as outlined in the staff report. Uh, it should also be noted too that the affected property owner has uh, through their representative attorney submitted a letter acknowledging the situation and that they're, uh, they're in agreement with the variance and they're not troubled by it. Um, again, the uh, uh, required findings uh, have has been made uh, and outlined in the staff report, um, and staff is recommending uh, that the variance be approved. And this does uh, include staff's presentation. I'd also add that the uh, one of the applicants is present to answer questions you might have as well. Are there any questions, comments from the commission? Yeah, I, I do have a question. So looking at the map here, maybe I'm wrong. The is, is that a building, like a garage? It's uh, the white, is that a shed? Shed, I was Yes, yes okay. it is. So currently that shed is across the property line on two individual, two oh, separate parcels? I'm, I'm sorry, Commissioner Freed. I, I should, the, uh, yes it is currently. It is That's currently. Fine. The, uh, fence line as it's been uh, uh, constructed many years ago, uh, yes, it does have the, uh, that accessory structure on, uh, uh, on an adjacent lot, and this would correct that situation as well. Thank you. Next question. I saw one letter in here from one one of the uh, other homeowners. It looks like there's three that are affected. Are the other two property owners okay with that? Uh, Commissioner Dean, actually, it's just the one property owner that is affected, okay. even though there are portions of their lots uh, that are uh, affected by this lot line change. We, staff would still determine that, in essence, uh, their lots are in, in compliance with the uh, requirement of 110 feet. Okay. <clears throat> Next question? Th th theirs are in compliance, but they're losing property, correct? Yes, they are. Okay, and, but, so, so to, to Commissioner Dean's question, uh, are they okay with the project itself? Yes, they are. All four of them or applicants for the uh, plat, okay. by the way. Yes, to clarify that. All right, thank you. Commissioner Armstrong. Thank you, that's a good clarification. I have a, I have a question. Sure. So <laughs> back to this, uh, this accessory building, this shed in the back, it's, so it sits in the 20-foot utility easement currently? Yes. Okay. So is that just grandfathered in? Well, uh, although that probably in regard to uh, uh, Accessory structures, uh, Commissioner Warner. Uh, generally, the, the verbiage on a plat will say property owners are admonished from placing structures, but and, and they're certainly made aware of it when they come in for building permits, assuming they do so. Uh, but ultimately, they can indeed place an accessory structure within a utility easement such as that, being apprised of the fact that should their work need to be done on that easement, that that structure will have to be removed. Sure. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Other questions? Would the applicant or the applicant's representative like to come forward and say anything? Yes, I'm Danny Stebbins. Uh, with Stebbins surveying, I prepared the plat. The uh, shed in question is going to be taken down and removed. 
it's not going to be there any longer. It's uh, dilapidated the way it is. And uh, this was all brought about. We did a survey last year and found out that the shed was on the line. And so Marie wanted to go through the proper procedures to try and uh, acquire the additional land that they've been taking care of all along because of where the fence lines have been built on the south edge of that utility easement. And when I was out there, I talked to the gentleman there at uh, 2626 before he passed away. And his only recommendation to me was make sure I retain my wood fence. I don't want to have to move it. But that, but that shed, it will be coming out of there when all, before it's all said and done. Any other questions? Nope. Took a little bit to get my head around, but I think I understand <laughs> it now. Thank you very right, much. I you. appreciate it. So this is an action item, not a public hearing item, correct? So um, is there any other discussion or questions among the commission? Anyone have a recommendation, um, a, motion? a motion? Madam Chair, based on the findings and analysis in the staff report, I move to approve the request of design variance related to the requirement that the minimum depth of lots and subdivisions shall be 110 feet. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All right. Chris? <coughs> Mr. Warner? Aye. Ms. Ringler? Aye. Mr. Kennard? Aye. Mr. Dean? Aye. Mr. Freed? Aye. And Mr. Armstrong? Aye. Motion passes 60 room. Thank you. Mr. Finder, is there any communications to the commission? Uh, just one update on the sign code. If you were following, well, it hasn't been in much in the media lately, uh, but we had a nice discussion with City Council on Tuesday, last Tuesday. Uh, we have scheduled it for action on September 10th. Um, I would, um, and, and by the way, that people can come speak that night. So um, uh, if you happen to feel the, the need as serving on a, our sign code committee, maybe, and the <laughs> chair of the planning commission, I might, <laughs> might help. I don't know, um, but no, no, no uh, pressure at all. Uh, I think it went well. There was only one, um, uh, some question about temporary sign duration, the 30 days, and also how that ties into if we ever regain control over political signs, how that would affect them. So there's, uh, so we're doing a little bit of uh, reaching out to some other cities and we'll, we'll pass that information on to the council. Uh, but that, that's really, um, it's really the, the gist of it. Uh, I, th I, think er I think out of 10 governing body members, nine commented on it. I mean, it was, it was a very good either questions or comments. Um, and in fact, some of the comments were we didn't, you know, may, may not be restricted enough. So um, I think you hit a, a good balance and struck a good balance uh, for what they were reviewing. Um, I think all in all, they're very impressed. But we'll see uh, when it comes to the 10th. So uh, Actually, you never know. The, the, the fate and direction of our portable, changeable message signs seems consistent with our discussion? Uh, yeah, Commissioner Armstrong, they, there was one, I think there was just one comment on the, port, on, that, on the portable message center signs, which was, how did we arrive at two years? Um, why not now? <laughs> um, so there was that sort of angle that they took. Uh, there's also a question about the 20 year amortization. Again, how do we arrive at that? Could it be sooner? So th if anything, there was, there was more of that flavor of questioning than why is it so long? Yeah. So all right. that's, uh, that's, that's all. Um, 
Next month, uh, one of our one of your members will have their last planning commission meeting. So Ms. We'll, we'll have something to for Ms. Jordan next month oh, nice. as well. Just <laughs> FYI, yeah, eight years or six years. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Term limits. <laughs> <laughs> Darn. Okay. Huh? And, and uh, Commissioner Messina got reappointed the other night as well, so she's oh, okay. on for another three years. Okay. Maybe she'll be there September 10th. She'll have a big sign <laughs> in front of her from now on. You can recruit her with an arrow on it. With an arrow on it. Yeah, portable sign. <laughs> she's back. <laughs> All right. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All right. Thank you.